now moving on to our first panel for the day. This is going to be an interesting discussion on changing marketing mix in accelerated digital adoption. We'd like to welcome our session chair first. He has been in the digital industry for over 17 years. He launched Isobar in India in August 2008 and has taken the agency to newer heights. Ladies and gentlemen, he is Shamsuddin Jasani, Group Managing Director, South Asia Isobar. A very warm welcome, Mr. Jasani. We also have on the panel Mr. Pavan Sarda, Group CMO, Marketing Digital and E Commerce, Future Group India, and Mr. Vincent Chaudhary, London Martin, Chief Innovation and Digital Officer, Tata Chemicals. A very warm welcome to all of you. Thank, thank you, Kathy. Hi. Thank you. Thank you. Hello. I hope I'm audible. Yes, sir. So, Mr. Yeah. Dasani, I'd leave this question to you to take the conversation forward. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, so, uh, thank you all. Thank for thank you for joining us uh, and. Uh, it's a, it's a very unique thing that we are now meeting Tech Munch uh, after so many years uh, being part of Munch and being physically there. Uh, it's it's now time to really take it to uh, the digital platform as such, and it's interesting. Uh, and uh, I've I've uh, been with Pawan on a, quite a few uh, platforms together, so we've been having this back and forth for a while now. Uh, but I've had this uh, unique opportunity now to meet uh, Vinkatri. Uh, the first time that we are there, and it will be quite an interesting panel, uh, a very a mix of uh, uh, experiences across uh, FMCG, across PPG, e-commerce, B two B chemicals, and of course as uh, as an as an agency for pretty much all my life. Uh, it's uh, the idea is uh, the focus on how media mix is changing uh, in the COVID and the post COVID world. Uh, so uh, a lot of panelists, including Sapna, before us, have uh, spoken about how COVID has really changed audiences and how audiences are now lapping up digital and how digital is really, really, uh, you know, exploding. I would say over the past six months, I think the change has been phenomenal. We've seen the adoption of digital and the curve really being very steep uh, in the last, especially four months uh, in the lockdown period. Uh, things are now slowly coming back to I would say the new normal. It's not normal yet, but I do see that digital is now uh, becoming, yes, it's important, but the trend is now again flattening as such. The, the curve is not going up as quickly as it was, but there are some changes which are here to stay. And the panel here really is about uh, what is going, what has happened, how are the media mix as well as from a business perspective, uh, how is digital now playing a very key role in this COVID and post-COVID world. And then we will uh, take up questions uh, from the team. So we'll give it about 30 minutes uh, for our conversations and about 15 minutes for the audience to really talk about it. So what we'll start off with is, is a minute uh, or two from uh, Pawan and from Inkadri in terms of uh, knowing them better uh, as the person they are uh, and the role that they play and how digital really is, is pretty much an integral part of uh, what they do. Uh, and then, um, you know, I'll introduce myself post that. So, yeah, so off, uh, up to you, Pawan, and then we can go to Venkatri. Hi, uh, good afternoon, everyone. I hope everyone's like safe home and watching us. Uh, yeah, I think uh, last, I think it's been five months, if I'm not mistaken. Like, I think there's been a roller coaster ride in everyone's life. Uh, obviously, I think that impacts business, that impacts uh, consumers, and that's brought in a lot of new things, you know, new perspective, new way of looking at uh, things. And I, I don't think initially we were sort of, you know, ready uh, or even even expected. You know, I, I think this was one phase where no marketing book has ever taught us that how to deal with it. But uh, I think, uh, but yeah, I think intuitive, intuitively, I think we started to react uh, especially in terms of how the consumers are reacting and how the businesses should be. I think the first thing which we did uh, for our business is actually to go online. I think uh, while I think some of our fashion businesses were already online, but I think we also took Big Bazaar online and we, we actually launched like shop.bigbazaar within the span of 15 days. I think that's, that's one thing which we did. And obviously, I think now it's been five months. A lot of things are changing. Uh, I think now it's a it's a question of uh, where the consumer is going and what they are doing and how we can actually service the consumer. That's where we are currently. Um, yeah. Uh, otherwise, uh, from a personal side, I had uh, 
you know, I'm the CMO for Future Group, uh, 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 apart from traditional marketing and digital marketing both. So that's that's from my side. Thank you. Yeah, we can't. Up to Hi. next. Hi. We'll give us uh, brief, bro. Hi. Uh, good evening. Uh, Venkat Yadri here from Tata Chemicals. Uh, I'm the Chief Operating Officer for the Nutrition Science business. And uh, which I just took over uh, a couple of weeks back, and uh, before that, uh, I was looking after uh, innovation and digital for uh, the Tata Chemicals uh, part of it uh, for uh, a year and a half. And previous to that, I was Chief Operating Officer in uh, Rallis, which is an agri input uh, company. And uh, clearly, I think uh, you know, uh, if you look at uh, what the COVID has made to all of us is that uh, it has taught us a lot of new things. It has kind of reinforced some of the old uh, uh, concepts that we used to think are very important and uh, changed uh, uh, not only the business priority, but also uh, customer preferences. How do they look at uh, markets? How do they look at their own self? I think there's been a lot of change and uh, uh, I'm sure you know some of those things will come up uh, as we are uh, go ahead in the discussion today. Thanks, thank, thank you both. Uh, so just a, a brief note on uh, on myself as well. I I look after South Asia for the Isobar Group, uh, and uh, I'm part of the exec member for the Densuages Network in India. Uh, just talking about as an as a as an agency and what we feel where things are going it's been a transformational journey for i think pretty much everyone from brands to businesses from smaller shops to us uh, as an as a agency group and as networks i think all of us are as as pavan greatly pointed out the first couple of months was just about running around and figuring out what life was all about i think it was a uh, the first month or so was really a struggle for everyone no one had an inkling of what to do. It, there was no right and wrong. It was just about uh, figuring out and trying to grapple with what's uh, what's difficult and what's easy. Uh, I think uh, the entire industry and all of us have really, and as India, have really come up to the challenge. And, and, and I think the speed at which things have evolved, the speed at which things have changed, uh, from a technology perspective, uh, I think we have to give it to uh, everyone saying that our, our internets have been on track, we are having this conversation and there is hardly a drop. Uh, I think uh, we've, as all of us, we've done a good job of really getting there. The, uh, the companies are doing a good job of uh, making sure that, uh, you know, everyone is uh, connected and everyone's doing the job and the consumers are also getting what they want. So it's been Everyone's reacted very well to COVID. The consumers have really started uh, uh, also, uh, you know, kind of experimenting. Uh, all kinds of platforms are gaining traction. Uh, E-commerce, of course, is is something which I think uh, I would say that uh, the the boom or the uh, the transformation that was supposed to happen much later, COVID. I think everyone knows about it. And everyone's talking about it. COVID has really brought forward that transformation. Uh, so my question to the panelists, uh, starting with Vinkatri, you, and then going to uh, Pawan is, what are any specifics that you have seen that COVID has enabled you, or the or digital has enabled you rather in this in this uh, last five months, which you would not have thought of before, and what has it that has changed in your media mix, which you think uh, you've explored in the last uh, uh, few months uh, as uh, as as covid as it and as as the transformation has happened for you as well yeah actually uh, when when covid started uh, um, i was actually looking after the it digital for tata chemicals so i was uh, i was on the side to make sure that the company gets the necessary support uh, to be able to leverage uh, the it and the digital platform uh, to reach out to the customers uh, now what was very critical is that uh, you know we've always believed and and you know from the business end that uh, it's it's very important uh, that you need to be physically sitting with the customer talking to the customer trying to get uh, uh, you know uh, if you need to do business development or resolve issues um, use physical means to do so that, and that was one of the critical changes that we have had to do uh, you know, if I look at uh, my own company in Tata Chemicals, uh, we have a B2B part of the business, which is a big part, which is our soda ash and salt part of the business. And uh, we have um, the B2B2C, which is the 
agri part of the business which is rallis which is part of our group and uh, so we had to kind of change in the uh, circumstances uh, in a very different manner in both the senses uh, with the b2b part of it uh, obviously you know the the critical part of in b2b is that uh, you need to be in close touch with the customer trying to resolve the necessary problems it's not much of uh, discovery of uh, uh, you know of new customers because in b2b uh, you know the, the the set of customers that we have are uh, kind of limited and fixed i mean it's not like a b2c where you have uh, thousands and uh, lakhs of them so there the important part of it is so how do you actually uh, use uh, digital to be able to facilitate the business transactions between companies make sure that we have online uh, uh, meetings with them meet across you know normally you know one has conferences every year so we had to do a conference uh, with 70 of them uh, uh, over uh, uh, the 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 web uh, that is from a b2b perspective b2c perspective b2b to b2c which is the rallis part of it there uh, we do reach out to uh, almost uh, 12 15 million farmers uh, every year and there our a lot of uh, work used to be in terms of marketing used to be uh, quite a lot of on ground marketing uh, where you know there would be posters there would be uh, jingles there would be um, road shows that's where our big marketing spends used to be with a bit of uh, Uh, digital but when this came about clearly we had to change because obviously nobody could go into the market so we had to leverage the digital way of working so you know the kind of uh, you know uh, youtube messages that used to go across to uh, you know talking about the product to uh, millions of farmers conducting uh, farmer meetings uh, for 300 400 farmers uh, and uh, taking training programs uh, which used to happen physically happening over the web uh, also uh you know the a big big change in the way we were able to leverage uh whatsapp um you know made small videos of uh, of of the various training programs that uh, we would normally conduct and then share it across the digital medium so there we have had to actually substantially change from uh, the physical connect uh, which almost was 95% used to be physical connect turned out to be almost uh, 50 60% to uh, digital connect and uh, a lot of investment and money also went into uh, leveraging the digital part of it so uh, venkatri hold that thought thought i will come back to you uh, with a question around that uh, pavan uh, you all yours in terms of understanding what the last 5 months have really brought um, i know you were already on a journey on uh, transformation yeah. and, and and digitization much before covid hit but your thoughts in how things have changed uh, and how covid has changed life for you as a marketer within the future group yeah so i think uh, you know I'll, i'll speak more from the consumer side uh, i think uh, for a retail brand it's very important that we acquire customers uh, and if you, if uh, the way i look at it uh, i don't know how much uh, where is it going to last what is it going to happen i'm talking more uh, as as uh, as digital says that you know it's all about the moment so let me speak about the moment right now so i think uh, if you look at uh, when we need to engage with our audience we have limited choices right i mean we know that there is a bit of an issue from a penetration like a traditional medium like press right we don't know where it is uh, and and of course television is something which i think uh, you need to have big budgets to sort of and i think it's good for brand building i mean that's the way i i look at it right currently i think what's really required is you need to have consumers like customers who can come and buy and obviously you have to kind of give them a lot of comfort of safety and so on and so forth so i think uh, that's why i think digital has played a big role obviously i think the usage of digital and a mobile phone has like increased multifold right and that's that's one of the reason why we chose this medium to sort of you know reach out to our target audience and you know and and give them different stories right i mean it's really not about i don't think we are in a era of saying that you know it's a best offer and come and shop with me right i don't think we are in that era at all i think there's an era which needs a lot of storytelling right it needs a lot of demonstration of what's happening in the store 
right? Like how what, what's the kind of safety measures are you taking, right? How are you ensuring that there is social distancing? I mean, I have got so many calls from you know a lot of relatives and so on and so forth, and everyone's like, oh, is it safe to go to the store? And I think a lot of those kind of storytelling had to happen. Obviously, while the media mix changed, or uh, the the storytelling also sort of changed, right? Uh, I think, uh, yeah, I mean, these are the kind of huge changes which we have seen. Um, and, and yeah, I mean, uh, I think 15th August was the first time when we actually saw that customers were coming out. I mean, apart from the online side, right? I'm not talking about the online side, but at least in the physical form, I think that was one day where a lot of us as retailers, when we were exchanging notes, we realized that actually the customers have sort of come out because of it's not because the stores were too crowded, but just because of the social distancing norm. We could see some cues also outside, right? I mean that that was that was I think very positive, um, and therefore I think we are looking forward to Festival, uh, you know, and and hopefully uh, you know uh, things should become a bit of a normal. I wouldn't say like it's going to be hundred percent, but somewhere there for us uh, for everyone. Uh, so so yeah, coming back to uh, what you were saying, Vin Kateri. Uh, in terms of uh, you know specifically taking on the farmers now and and the media mix that swapped from 95% physical to 60% digital, uh, that's that's really what I think a lot of people uh, speak about in terms of saying that because of COVID the transformation has really you know kind of jumped on one side. Do you think this will sustain? Do you think now that you've tasted this working, uh, this platform now started to working, even when we go back to uh, say the new normal or close to normal that it was there. Do you think that uh, you will still uh, now use this much more than you were doing earlier? And now, you know, uh, the new digital norm is here to stay, and it's not going back to what it was uh, in the pre-COVID days. Uh, see, I would uh, uh, look at it uh, by looking at uh, you know what are the customer needs and how does it uh, how the how does the company reach out to the customer. Uh, there are certain services which require physical presence. There are some uh, things which can be done digitally. Now, for example, uh, in the area of farming, there is a lot of work that needs to be done where you have to go and demonstrate a product. You have to use the product on the field and demonstrate that it is actually giving the benefit to increasing crop yield, uh, you know, keeping the crop safe, etc. Uh, and there are uh, other things which are, uh, you know, where you are actually Talking about the product communication, creating a um, need, uh, you know, in terms of awareness creation. Uh, what we, what I would think is that uh, uh, while today we have kind of swung the other way around uh, to quite a lot of digital, uh, I would say that uh, the digital proportion will be definitely much higher than the pre-COVID days. But uh, will it uh, uh, come down substantially? Uh, you know, I don't think that would happen. Because what we have seen is that um, uh, the part where you can do offline, I mean, sitting from far away uh, using digital media, which is uh, communication, training programs, uh, you know, awareness building, those are things which will are likely to continue to be in digital. Uh, the place where we have to go and do product demonstrations, that will again go back to uh, the physical means. So I would say that there will be a shift, partial shift back but not a full shift back to older times. Okay, and now a question to the panel. Uh, I've been, I it's a uh, slightly uh, mischievous question, I would put it, uh, that, uh, uh, you know, uh, in, IPL is coming up and uh, there is, of course, uh, now that people are uh, at home and slightly stepping out of home, there is still this, anxiety of people stepping out and still the you know the semi lockdown and unlock three is coming up um the questions that are floating is that will the percentage of people spends that were there on ipl remain like it was between digital and television or do you think it will skew more towards television or more towards digital this is purely related to the next uh, you know uh, the largest event uh, honestly this largest event is also coinciding with uh, festival uh, for the first time, and uh, and clearly the eyeballs are might the spends are might shift more towards IPL than uh, towards uh, you know the the festival spends. How do you see that? Do you see that playing up? Uh, I mean, anyone can take that question. Uh, do you see it more towards television, or do you see that it's going to be digital first? 
Okay, so uh, if I take the question, uh, yeah. Firstly, I think uh, 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 IPL happening per se is a great thing because I feel yeah. that uh, somewhere I believe that uh, uh, you know advertising and consumption they are kind of correlated with each other, right? Advertising creates consumption, and obviously to create consumption, people do advertising, right? So I think that's a good thing. Firstly, a bit of a positivity which uh, the country will see. I think the you know, and I, I think the timing is pretty right from a festive perspective and so on. So I think as a viewer, I'm looking forward. There's no doubt about it, right? Uh, as an advertiser. Um, I, I, I don't know. I mean, uh, you know, it's it's again, uh, it depends from businesses to businesses. And it also depends a lot from, uh, you know, at what stage they are, right? If I speak of myself and my business, I think what's really important right now is more than brand building, actually acquiring customers. So I'm just putting that up front, right? I mean, that's the biggest need which uh, we have it. I think just to create that funnel, and I think uh, obviously uh, digital also create a bit of a more engagement and we have seen it in the past, like people like I think Swiggy and all, they've done some fabulous job, right? So I think, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, you know, uh, uh, brands who have huge monies definitely go for, her, you know, the, the mainline uh, advertising. But I think if people have uh, restricted monies in terms of budgets, because all of us are going through that, uh, Shams, you have to like, you know, take... Uh, consideration of that right because there's a yes. huge amount of marketing cuts which has happened across right so anybody who has money i mean I, I, I would definitely advise that you know go go ahead and spend it on digital for during ipl because i'm sure that just the just the uh, you know uh, uh, consumption of phone is is going to be far more active during that that point in time and you know that ipl is just not about viewing it ha it adds so many other things to it right so yeah, I mean that that's what is going to be my take. Yeah, I, I'll also add to it, but uh, you know the I, I think that uh, the whole community angle that uh, digital really brings yeah. is where the investment in IPL on digital really works. Like like you were saying, it's not just about one way viewing. Uh, right. You know what what your mobile phone and what uh, that brings towards the whole. So while you're watching and while you're actually yeah. you know kind of because you're not at home. It's right. even more reason that you will use your phones yes. and your your uh, digital presence to interact with your friends and and it really depends upon the platforms to be able to latch on to that and innovate to be able to you know capitalize on this whole thing saying okay there's IPR happening how do uh, how do I build communities around uh, it and, and 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 start being a part of that community and and brands have a uh, you know can leverage that uh, I really feel that that's that's where. And you're right. Uh, you know the spends have come down. Uh, digital gives a bigger bang for the buck, uh, yeah. and I think it's it's something which is uh, critical. So even I feel that uh, you know IPL will uh, will see uh, an uplift in digital spends. Uh, Vinka Vinkadri, uh, anything that you would like to add from your uh, marketing hat? I know you wear so many hats uh, as a CEO, as a marketing person as well. Uh, you know your thoughts in terms of how do you feel that that's going to work? Yeah, see, one important thing that uh, has happened is that uh, the COVID has changed uh, the behavior of uh, all of us. So people have got used to now uh, digital quite a lot. And uh, human nature, uh, you know, that stickiness will continue for quite some time. So I would reckon that one, uh, you know, people will continue to be in digital. Uh, so there is going to be a lot more uh, uh, focus that IPL would get covered through um, digital that's one second thing is that uh, let me also give you a personal example you know i have uh, two 20 year old sons both of them love soccer uh, um, and you know uh, earlier when any of these soccer matches used to happen uh, they, all their friends all used to congregate in uh, a one house and watch their television where they used to have fun right up to whatever two o'clock three o'clock those uh, european matches now because of uh, in the last uh, few months they've all been sitting in their house individual houses and they are on their mobile and they're still having fun watching the uh, watching the game so what is happening is that uh, this is act earlier uh, one of the things that all of us thought is that uh, having a community fun is only when you physically get together now what is new thing that has come out is that you can have community fun, but using digital means sitting where you are. I think that is something which has which has actually come out as a new concept, and that I would believe is going to be a big transformation in the way people are going to leverage 
uh, the digital way of uh, uh, reaching out to customers yeah i think i think that's that's really great i think that uh, works well uh, one last question before i go to the audience questions uh, the one last question now is looking forward uh, i think we've had a lot of these answers already but i'll just like you guys to encapsulate in a minute or so uh, how do you feel the post covid world is going to look like or uh, the new normal is going to look like from a marketer's perspective uh, and uh, you know what is it that you would like to see uh, from uh, you know as a brand or a marketer or platforms whatever is your ask uh, in a post covid world so the the way i look at it is that you know uh, i think uh, when you look at consumer is at the center and consumer has really taught us uh, in last uh, couple of months obviously i think uh, what and it's it's always been relevant i don't think it it needs any pandemic to sort of teach us but the thing is you know um, you will have to change yourself or business idea or the way you engage with your customers the way consumers are changing right i feel that obviously uh, their expectation is that you know um, we need to serve them the way they want it you know whether they want to come to the store they want to be uh, delivered uh, the stuff at at their home or they want to book it online and come to the store i think the choices will be theirs and i think that's how one big transformation at least in retail we we say that you know omni channel for the longest time was just a cool word but finally it's come alive because of you know yeah. pandemic that's one big change and it's it's here to stay there's no yeah. doubt about it and i i think all the retailers all businesses need to you know accept this change and move forward uh i will uh, i will talk about b2c and i i will also give uh, something which i would also like to make a mention on the b2b part of it like i said in b2c clearly uh, the examples that i gave uh, there has been a phenomenal increase in digital it won't remain at the same level i think there will be a slip back Uh, to more uh, the traditional ways uh, in especially in the rural part of the market but uh, it will definitely be much higher than what it was uh, a year back that's one from a b2c perspective i see digital coming down but much staying much higher than what it used to be previously i'll talk about the b2b part of it i would segment b2b into two broad categories one is the product b2b and the services b2b now in the product b2b again i can segment the product b2b into where the market is uh, where where the customer base is very limited and where the customer base is uh, wide uh, now when i talk about the customer base which is limited like us for example when i talked about my soda ash business where the customers are limited we traditionally did not use too much of uh, digital means uh, because you know there were very few customers where we have started using a bit of digital now uh what has happened is that the the product b2b product uh, where there are huge number of customers like for example the engineering industry people who supply pumps people who supply uh, various equipments for example earlier uh, they used to send make you a lot of brochures stuff like that and send it to various purchase managers talking to them about their product now what has happened is the covid has actually taught them saying that they moved completely to digital means now they are having webinars they are having quite a lot of uh, uh, you know e brochures so i see that uh, you know the, the 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 large range of uh, you know uh, the product segment which has la large number of customers they have started leveraging digital pretty well if i come to the service segment and i have seen that because uh, you know when i was uh, in the it i was like a customer now earlier all of us knew that all the it companies used to hold very large conferences multiple times a year uh, and this time the covid they have been holding completely a um, huge number of webinars and stuff like that uh, using digital means so there i uh, where i would say that the service segment the b2b service segment has kind of shifted and seen the benefit of digital and there again uh, you know digital will play a very very big role so in in conclusion what i would like to say is that whether it is b2b or it's b2c the transition to digital has happened it may slip back from what it was during covid but it will be far higher than what it was pre covid thank you thank you thank you both of you all uh, thanks for summing up that beautifully uh, i'll just take one minute and then we'll go to questions i think we have only 3 minutes on the clock 
so I think in summation, what we are saying is that uh, this last five months have been really transformational for uh, all marketers. Uh, we're all grappling with what was happening. And now I think we're doing a great job of actually getting there. Uh, and now I think the post COVID world is going to look like uh, somewhere in between what it was as a norm and what uh, we have got to uh, right now. But there are some things that are going to forever change. Uh, as Pawan pointed out, I mean, yes, I uh, it it was like you know, uh, digital is coming, digital is coming. We used to hear it for ten years. Uh, now you know, O two O and uh, what uh, you know when we're talking about all that stuff, that is something online to offline, and all that was again being spoken about so much, but we didn't see fruitful changes. But suddenly, that's really started working. Uh, so we needed this little bit of a jolt out of the blue. Uh, I think it's very important for us to keep on giving ourselves that jolt rather than waiting for these jolt. I think consume customers are already much smarter than us and they are ahead of them. We need to start being with them and trying to be with them. So I think one of the things that COVID has taught us is that let's start being a little more. The speed needs to improve of uh, how we are reacting. I think that's something that uh, uh, the, the you know the revolutions that have been bought, whether it's the geo revolution and now uh, the COVID revolution, as I would call it. I think it's it's really a, the one thing that we've understood from this is that we need to be much quicker in um, you know responding to what the customer needs are and maybe sometimes even uh, identifying something and being a little ahead of it. So I think that's uh, kind of leaving it there and uh, we have time for two questions. Uh, I'll ask one question and wait for the others because there are a few questions that are coming up and then uh, the teams are messaging me the questions because I'm not seeing it on this. Uh, so there's one question in, th uh, in terms of saying and it's a it's it's a very unique question because it's 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 so specific. But I'll anyways ask it. Is, is that uh, you know while we speak about going digital, so this is from Ridhima. Do you think brands should start focusing on innovative ways of enhancing customer experience? Sonic ending is booming with brands like Mastercard using it across all customer points. So it's a very very specific question on Sonic branding. Do you think it's important for brands to consider their Sonic identity? To engage with the consumer consumers and enhance their digital experience. I'm gonna use the question as an example because it's so specific in terms of saying, you know, you need to develop a sonic identity. Basically, you need an audio, um, you know, you need uh, you know, you need uh, hearing and you need audio as a, a sonic identity for your brands because uh, you can't step out and how are you uh, creating a sonic identity? I'll just expand that because it's so specific to say that uh, innovation has always been the key of digital. But going forward, do you feel that that's going to be a very important part of it? This was a question of this expanding onto that. So anyone from the panel wants to take it? Yeah, I would. I would think that uh, uh, you know technology is going to change. Uh, see, one of the big things uh, along with Sonic, where I believe there is going to be a big impact is the whole concept of AR and VR. Artificial, uh, uh, you know, people are going to be, uh, you know, people want experience. So the way I would think is that. Uh, uh, People would be, you know, the marketers would need to create something which, uh, you know, you can actually wear it on your eyes uh, like a goggle and then see, uh, you know, virtual reality, how things are happening. I think th there, what would effectively happen is that uh, along with uh, getting to know about it, one can also experience about it. So I, I'm surely looking forward that there is going to be a lot of VR and AR that will impact uh, the marketing communication and the story that. Uh, companies will have to put it forward. Yeah, I, I agree. And especially from a B2B perspective, I think, uh, you know, I, I was wanting to add that uh, augmented reality is actually taking place, it taking yeah. the place of actually going and physically uh, showcasing, you know, how a plant works, how safety measures in a plant are working, how, how to go about, you know, uh, you know, giving any kind of uh, uh, instructional videos. I think AR is playing a massive role in terms of just cutting that out in terms of walking into and physically going there and doing stuff. So I think, yeah, I mean, that's something that is uh, really key uh, in terms of that. So I just want to add here, uh, you know, I, I don't know about the Sonic uh, thing in particular because it'll, it'll depend from business to business, right? Yeah. I mean, but I think the, uh, the, uh, the, you know, the way to innovate, I think it's, it's, it's always been a requirement and it's going to be a requirement. So I can tell you some of our fashion business, for example, and wherever there was a lockdown, right? It was so difficult to sort of sell because, you know, uh, obviously there's a lockdown and, and, and it, I, I don't call it like innovation, but I think it's just a simple human logic. 
uh, we reached out to our customer and we were doing uh, you know shop uh, whatsapp video selling to them right because we were showing it to them you know what they can possibly buy they were selecting it on the on the on the phone and then we were delivering it to them so i'm just saying innovation is part and parcel so obviously a, a, a experience like this if if one is able to put it in a far more uh, you know customer friendly way i see there's a scope which can become a part and parcel of an entire retail ecosystem you know tomorrow and i'm sure lots of brands would work towards it uh, so the last question uh, because we are out of time on this uh, so the last question is that things are changing all the time but there seems to be a growing consensus that we can't just uh, flick a switch and return to things as they were do you think it's just going to be easy as just stepping out tomorrow and saying okay you know things are back to normal uh, you know and we've taken this question in a in a way earlier but uh, you know i'll just take this up uh, so is it as going to be as saying that okay uh, we're all out covid is out let's just go back to our offices and marketing is back uh, to what it was in the pre covid is it going to be as easy as that looks like a good uh, you know at least a dream to have <laughs> but yeah i mean I, i i don't know i mean i think it's a very tough question to sort of answer uh, and say that you know things will go back to normal i i particularly don't think so because i think you know uh, I, i think there's there's a huge amount of changes which has happened uh, as consumer as emotions i think there's a lot which has gone through and we are going through it's not that it's something which is out so i i think just going back and going back to the earlier era of pre covid i think there's a lot of time i mean i mean i i particularly don't think so yeah i also uh, agree with that that uh, consumers have changed uh, what they are the way they want uh, the messaging and um, having got uh, you know uh, gone in uh, gone into the new way of uh, leveraging digital uh, i don't think consumers are going to go back to the older ways of getting message from a brand so easily so i think uh, you know there is going to be a lo lot more stickiness uh, that digital is here to stay and going back to old times i don't see it happening so fast okay thank you thank you both thank you uh, exchange for media for having us on uh, tech month i think we are now uh, just about uh, running out of time we're already 5 minutes over but we started late so Uh, thank you, and I think it was an engaging uh, conversation. We were supposed to have uh, a few more panelists, but I think uh, we've made it work. Uh, and uh, thank you for having us here. And I, I really feel that I do agree that the new normal—it's going to be a new normal. It's never—I I don't think we are ever going to go back to, uh, from a marketing perspective, from a business perspective. Yes, from a uh, you know from our life's perspective, we'll be back to normal. But from yeah. a marketing perspective, from a digital perspective. we never going to go back to that normal that it was so so thank you thank you for having us and uh, yeah so that's about it from us thank, thank you thank you so much thanks thank chams thanks thank you thank you thank you to sarada mr ranganathan and mr jasani for that wonderful conversation a lot of takeaways for our, all our audience members and thank you for addressing so many questions of theirs we are also sharing this conversation online on twitter using our hashtag #techmunch if you guys have any time then please go ahead and uh, give us your feedback as well and see what the audience viewers are also talking about thank you so much gentlemen for being here and taking out the time thank, thank you. you yeah